Welcome back to Life of Bliss. Oh, did I scare you? I'm sorry. This week, I've got a pretty cool video for you guys. I'm going to be going over the entire process of making countertops for my bar area. My wife and I were originally looking at either quartz or granite for the bar area, but we went with an option that will save us a little bit of money. And by a little bit of money, I mean several thousand dollars. So we decided to go with a metallic epoxy coating over our countertops. We ended up teaming up with the guys from Ligari. They sent us one of their countertop epoxy kits. It will be enough to cover all of the counters in our bar area and cost just under $600 for the, uh, for the options that we went with. So I'll be going over the entire install process with that. But for now, I've got to get my carpenter talon upstairs. We're going to cut out these countertops, get them fit up, and see if we can't get the epoxy on this week. Now you need to be safe with the power tools. Oh, you know? Okay. All right, we'll go. Well, it was the carpenter's nap time, so I guess it was up to me. I took a circular saw and cut the three quarter inch MDF down to a more manageable size and then squared everything up on the table saw and cut it to the dimensions for the countertop. So before I put the countertops on to see how the fitment is, I have to install these countertop support brackets. Um, these are installed by routering out about a half inch off the top plate here, uh, which is the thickness of this bracket. It will then lay in there and overhang. Uh, this is about six or seven inches that is going to be going past the uh, top plate for support for that countertop. Now the supports are in place and there's a nice level surface for that countertop to sit on the bar. So with a quick mock-up, everything is fitting fairly good. Um, I'm going to have to come back and trim down this piece just a little bit uh, to make sure that fits right in there. I'm also going to have to do a little bit of sanding to get things to fit flush up against the wall. Uh, but for the most part, everything is fitting nice. Um, we'll go ahead, get all those uh, small details ironed out, and then we'll move on to getting this a little bit thicker. To finish off the overall shape of the countertops, I just took a round container and used it to give the corners a rounded edge. From there, I used a jigsaw to cut the corners and a sander to smooth everything out. Next, I cut down some half-inch MDF that will be used to increase the thickness of the countertops. Yeah, so I got rained out from outside, had to rush everything in, but we're going to go ahead and move to our next step. Uh, we are going to increase the thickness of the three quarter inch MDF that I was using. Here are my cutouts uh, for two parts of the countertop. And this is some half inch MDF. So we're going to increase the total thickness of this to an inch and a quarter. Um, so let's get these two pieces glued together and throw some weights on them. I made a quick reference line for my cutout, covered both surfaces in wood glue, and set them together. I used some clamps and some weights that I put on top to make sure it had a good bond. So here's the next day after one of the counters has dried. Uh, you can see filling that gap pretty well with that glue. Hopefully we won't have to do too much as far as filling any gap later. Then I went back and threw some 18 gauge nails. Uh, just to go ahead and secure everything down. We'll fill those in with a little bit of wood filler or body putty before we prime everything. My back wall counter is nine foot long, so I had to extend these by one foot. I added one foot on the top side on one end and the bottom side on the other end. This made the finished countertop a lot stronger than would have been if they were on the same end. I clamped and threw some brads in the top and let this one dry. So the next step is to go over everything with a flush trim bit on the router. It has a bearing there up at the top that will follow the, uh, the top piece that we originally made. And then this part here, we'll go ahead and 
uh, trim that bottom piece, the half inch MDF that we just glued on. This process gives an exact copy of the cutout I made and smooths the edges in the process. I then set the countertop in place, took a few measurements, and traced out where the sink should go. I then use a sawzall to cut out the sink opening. I honestly should have done this step before gluing the two pieces together because I had a heck of a time getting the blade to make a straight cut through that thick of wood. The last step before priming was to use some sheetrock spackle and fill in all the brad nail holes, as well as rounding over the edges with a router and going over the front edge for any imperfections. This is very important because the epoxy will show any imperfections or transition lines between the two boards if they're not smoothed out. The proper size faucet hole also needs to be drilled out, just be sure not to catch your board on fire during this stage. I took some Bullseye 123 primer and put two fairly thick coats on both the top and the bottom side of these countertops. This will ensure that the MDF is sealed off from any water or moisture. Alright, I got everything fit into place. It is primed and uh, screwed down to the countertops, except for the bar top here that's going to be removed and silicone down. Everything is in place. For a seamless transition to the wall, I taped off the edges and used some clear caulk to fill in the gaps. So now we're getting to the fun stuff. Uh, like I said earlier, I reached out to the guys at Ligari. They hooked me up with one of their countertop epoxy kits. I'm going to show you everything that comes with that kit and then do the whole installation process for you guys. So just right off the bat, everything comes clearly labeled in containers A and B uh, for everything that you'll be mixing, as well as having nice instructions on the side of each container. So everything was real easy to separate and, um, and, and get where it needs to go. Uh, our first step here is to do this water-based epoxy primer. We'll be putting that over all of the countertops. Next, we'll be doing our base coat, which is, we'll be doing snow white in this particular one. Uh, so we'll lay all of the base coat down. We'll move on to do our black and titanium uh, accent colors that we'll be running through this. And we'll swirl that into the white base color. And then after it dries for about 24 to 48 hours, I'll go ahead and put on the uh, top coat. And I'll actually be using the uh, grit that comes with it to give it more of a satin look as well. You'll also need to get plenty of mixing sticks and buckets to mix all of this stuff in. Um, a lot of these you need to mix in one container and then pour into another and mix thoroughly again before applying to your countertop. So be sure you have plenty of containers for that. And here's just a quick look of how I have everything set up. I'm doing the bar top here out in the middle of the floor um, just because it's going to be easier to do it that way and I'm not going to have to worry about drips on my other countertops. And these two countertops are actually screwed in and installed so I'll be applying the epoxy with these installed in place. I won't be showing the mixing processes, but once you've mixed the epoxy primer, coat the entire surface of the countertops. This should dry within 60 to 90 minutes and be ready for the epoxy coating. Next it was time for the epoxy. I mixed parts A and B together in a container and added the white metallic powder to give it its color. One thing that helped with color consistency was mixing everything in one container and then transferring it into another container and mixing again. This also ensured that there wasn't any metallic that didn't get mixed in with the epoxy. As you can see I'm going to all of the countertops and putting a thick line of epoxy down the center. 
I'll be able to come back here in just a bit and spread that out with a roller. When pushing everything out with the roller, I'm just looking to get a nice even coat of epoxy along the top side of the countertop. I'm not pushing it over the edge quite yet. I'll come back here in just a little bit and push the epoxy over the edge. Next I took the roller and rolled some epoxy along all of the edges. This will allow the epoxy to get good coverage on all of the edges and drip off as it self levels. The plastic on the floor and taped to all of the cabinets is to help catch these drips. After hitting all of the edges, I came back and gave the metallic a quick swirl to get it going in different directions. Next it was time to mix up and add the accent colors. The easiest way to do this was to just drizzle some of the epoxy onto the countertop using the stir stick. Here I am just adding lines that I will come back and swirl into the white epoxy later. One thing you'll notice is I put quite a bit of epoxy right on the edge whenever I'm adding these accent colors. This is because as it self levels, a lot of that product will roll off and fall off the edge. This will ensure some of that color will stay on the corner as it rolls off. You'll want to apply all of one accent color before mixing up and moving on to the next. Here I am applying the black before the titanium accent. When mixing your accent colors, you're most likely going to end up with a lot more than you actually need. Do not set these containers on plastic or anything else that is sensitive to heat because this epoxy will heat up very quickly and get very hot in those containers. It will get hot enough to melt plastic and make it stick whatever it is sitting on. Don't ask me how I know that. This is also another reason that you should only mix one of the accent colors at a time and not both. We wanted these countertops to turn out fairly dark, so I went back and added just a few drops in all of the open spaces. After the black, I mixed up the titanium accent and started adding it to the countertop. You can already see some of the black coloring dripping over the side from the epoxy self-leveling. After all the accent colors were added, I came back with my roller and started swirling everything together. You don't really want to push down with the roller so where you're moving the epoxy, you're more just setting it on top and kind of mixing the colors together. I quickly figured out the technique I wanted to use was to go across all of the black lines with the roller separately and then come back in the more lighter areas and kind of blend everything in. In this step, it's really important not to move the roller in all the same direction. Uh, you want to kind of move it randomly and in different directions to give it more of a random and natural look. Also be sure to roll over your edges to blend those as well.
Here you can get a good look of the tape I put on the walls. The epoxy needs to be pushed all the way up against that tape when spreading everything out. The tape should be removed shortly after swirling all of your accent colors. Over the next hour, I went over all of the countertops two or three times with a propane torch. This will ensure that any bubbles that form during the curing process are popped. When doing this, be sure to not stay in one spot too long and don't really get on your edges because it will make that epoxy run really thin. This edge will be going up against the wall, but you can see how the epoxy will show imperfections if everything is not smooth. As the epoxy self-leveled and dripped off the side, I came back with a stir stick every 30 to 45 minutes to scrape off the drips. I had to do this about five or six times before it started getting tacky enough to where it wouldn't drip anymore. So now that everything is dried for at least 24 hours, we're ready for our final step, which is the top coat. Uh, Ligari gives you a few options with that. You can either do a flood coat of epoxy, which will give it a very glass, smooth, glossy look, uh, very similar to how it looks now, or you can do their urethane top coat, which you have to roll on. You can either do a glossy urethane coat or a satin or matte uh, urethane top coat. The way this comes is in two parts here. And to get the satin look, they give you some grit that you will mix in with the top coat formula. Um, we are actually going to be doing the satin look, so I'm going to be mixing in that grit with the top coat. I've gone ahead and put a new layer of tape against all my edges. I'm going to get this mixed up and get it laid on the countertops. I put on a new roller and started applying the top coat. When applying this, you want to be sure to put it on very thin. You don't want any runs or drips going over the side. This will ensure a fine, consistent texture throughout the countertop. Also, if applied too thick, you won't get the sheen consistency and texture consistency from the grit. So this isn't completely dry yet, but here is the sheen once the top coat is put on versus the sheen without the top coat. Let's see if I can catch the light there. No texture, very shiny. So we'll get this last one coated up. The top coat's dry, I installed the bar top and everything turned out fantastic. This is a very easy product to use as long as you take your time and follow all the mixing instructions. 
My wife and I debated on going with the satin top coat versus the clear epoxy flood coat, but we are very happy with how they turned out. This top coat is much more scratch and scuff resistant than epoxy would have been by itself, and it gave the counters a great look. Thanks again to the guys at Ligari for getting me set up and answering any questions that I had about installation. Be sure to check out their YouTube channel for plenty of different color combinations and installation videos. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys soon.